Are you looking for Jesus Christ or the Antichrist? You see, if you are uh, believing in the rapture or the resurrection being before the time of Jacob's trouble, the people call it the pre-trib rapture, well, then you're looking for Jesus. But if you believe anything else, then you're looking for the Antichrist. Well, I'm post-trib, uh, well, you're looking for the Antichrist. Mid-trib, look, you're looking for the Antichrist. Uh, um, Pre-wrath, post-trib, uh, looking for the Antichrist. Um, and it's kind of a weird situation because you say that Jesus Christ is your Savior and yet he can't save you from his judgment that's coming. You say, oh no, well, it's uh, Satan, what Satan does to the earth. It's the, the, the Great Tribulation is what Satan is doing. And then the wrath comes later and things. Where does it say that? Where does Satan have the power to open the seals? You know, well, well it, the, the seals are being opened and the Lord, he opens a seal and looks down and sees what the devil's doing. That's not what it says at all. Um, the whole thing from start to finish is the Lord doing that. That's the whole purpose of the book of Revelation. It isn't some kind of a thing of that the devil's doing this and, and you know Jesus is up there saying, oh, come here, let's, let's watch what the devil's doing to the earth. Oh, that's bad. Oh, you know, very bizarre. But you know, the Bible says some things. Let me read a verse of scripture to you here. I think it's a rather important one. Trying to get this done before the mosquitoes eat me alive. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9, we'll begin there. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus. Turn it with one hand here, come on. All right, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Huh, we're not appointed unto wrath. Hmm, wherefore comfort one another with these words. It's a comfort, knowing that we're not going to be going through that time that's coming. Read the, through the book of Revelation, all these people being killed and, you know, peace is caught up from the earth and whatever else. And it's kind of funny because you read all the Pauline epistles and they begin and end with peace, a promise of peace. And yet peace is caught up in, from the earth by the red horse rider, the second guy to show up, the second seal. Hmm, interesting. Then uh, wouldn't that cause a contradiction? Cause a contradiction there between uh, a promise of having peace and peace being taken from the earth. How would that work out if we're going to be here for that? Uh, then you have a God that's a liar. I'm going to deliver you from the wrath to come. Oops, <laughs> except for that last generation. They're getting into it a little bit, you know, just kind of for some of it. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, and, uh, you know, if you face the mark of the beast, you know, yeah, you're sealed until the day of redemption, according to Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 4, except if you take the mark of the beast. And, you know, you have to take the mark of the beast technically if you're a guy, because, you know, if any provide not for his own, especially for they have his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel, First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. So, yeah, sorry, Brian, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast in order to buy and sell in that time period coming up oops sorry you know and uh, you know if any man take the mark worship the beast in his image the same shall have the wrath of god come upon him you know basically uh, revelation 14 verses 9 through 12 talks about that so uh, i guess the bible just contradicts if you're a postie um you know i mean john he was called up before the antichrist was uh, re revealed but uh, there were 24 elders there and you know angels round about the throne and and whatever but you know, we're not, they're just there in spirit. They're not actually there and physically there and they're not crowned with, you know, 24 elders with the crowns on their heads. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, a lot of symbology going on. <laughs> uh -huh. A lot of people make things symbolic because they can't understand it. They don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. But the point remains, um, from whence we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we look, wait for his son. We're waiting for his son from heaven. I look up here in the sky and I look and I say, one of these days there's going to be a door that's going to appear up there. Look up there like that and I'm going to see a door open up in heaven. And I'm going to hear a voice, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which will say, come up hither. Uh, John chapter 10 talks about he goes before his sheep and he calls his sheep by name and he leads them out. 
they go out and then they come back in and find pasture. Hmm. In other words, we go out, up at the catching up, caught up in the clouds with our Lord into glory. When Jesus receives his own, the redemption of the purchased possession. See, I'm walking around down here and it's, you know, you can see a little thing. It says sold. Property of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have one of those on you as well if you're saved. Um, there isn't any kind of a, a worry about, oh, you know, I, I think I lost it. I, I'm not really sure. I, uh, you know, if you're saved, you're sealed until the day of redemption. You're sealed. There's a special seal on you. I'm going to be going up sometime. The Lord's going to call me up to be with him. And when I go up there, I'll be there through that whole time of Jacob's trouble. And then we come down at the second coming of Jesus Christ. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then the thousand year kingdom gets started. I'm going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years down here on this earth. That's finding pasture. And again, I'm just hitting these verses very quickly by memory and just kind of referring to this. But I've done the studies over the years proving this whole thing. It's Bible doctrine. And I don't refer to C.I. Schofield or John Nelson Darby or any other teacher or preacher or whatever else. And a lot of these things, I brought it out, you know, without ever reading from anybody else. Maybe somebody else brought it out. I can't give, you know, just say, I've brought out things that nobody else has seen. I don't know. But I didn't learn it from anybody but the Holy Ghost. And it, I compare it with Scripture with Scripture. And I bring it out and I say, okay, body of Christ, what do you think about this? And people say, you know, I read through the same passage. I was thinking the same thing. It's wild that you said this. I think it's true. I think that that actually lines up. Somebody else, yeah, I thought the same thing. We compare it, okay? I don't just have some kind of a thing where, you know, the Holy Denlinger speaks and the, and the people submit and whatever. No, tell me what you think, all right? But if you're newly saved, I can tell you right now, the devil hates this idea of being Christians being caught up before he can come and destroy you. See, if you, go into, if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, what happens is you could actually lose your salvation in that time period. And the devil would love that. He gets real excited about that. So he wants to get people into this mindset um, that they're going to be going and they're going to come into a time when they're going to lose their salvation. You know, and it just wrecks your faith. <laughs> I mean, what kind of joy is there looking out into the future and saying, well, I guess eventually we're going to see the Antichrist and, you know, and all of a sudden he'll show up one day and, and we'll say, well, kids, uh, the Antichrist is here on the television and there he is. And it's that time. I guess we can't uh, go to the grocery store anymore and we can't use our bank account and, and everything. Oh, why, Daddy? Well, because the Lord's, uh, he's got this all worked out, you know, and we're going to die now. <laughs> we're going to have our heads cut off. I thought we were part of the bride of Christ. I thought we were, you know, part of the chaste virgin that gets presented to Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Hmm. The Lord kills the devil's bride in Revelation 17 and 18, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And then the bride of Christ gets married to the Lord comes down to the earth for the marriage supper of the lamb. Oh, no, 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 we're, we're here for it. You know, <laughs> let's all sing our favorite hymn now. Um, uh, it will be worth it all when we, or no, no, it, that can't be it because when we see Jesus, oh, let me redo it. Um, it will be terrible when we see the Antichrist. Um, life's trials will then get bad when we see him. One glimpse of his terrible face, all hope it will erase. So bravely endure to the end and see if you can make it, my friend. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Brings a tear to the eye. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a weird thing. Oh, it's all a lie. John Nelson Darby, it's all a lie. There's no rapture, friend. And these people, you know... These pre-tribbers, they're going to lose their faith. And, uh, you know. and it's so funny, too, because, you know, pre-tribbers, um, we look for antichrist type of stuff a lot more than posties. I've noticed that posties are very worldly. Um, kind of a weird thing. Even if it was true that we were going to be left here, which it isn't, but even if it was, we would pick up on it much quicker than the posties. You know, we're busy watching and, and things, and 
you know, and you start to think to yourself, I wonder how much longer it is, you know. When am I going to get to see face to face with Christ my Savior? Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me, the old hymn. I guess we shouldn't sing that anymore. It should be, you know, coming, uh, looking at the internet with the Antichrist mind killer or something. <laughs> it's so terrible I can barely stand it. You know, <laughs> we like to joke around and make little fun lyrics to songs and things, but uh, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, this whole thing. All the, the body of Christ is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Next thing to show up is the Antichrist. Oh, wherefore comfort one another with these words. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, again, yeah, I have the studies. It's going to take you some time. Um, oh, I don't you know, I get these people. I've already studied it and I don't need to look into it anymore. My mind's made up. Well, it probably is. There's not a whole lot I can do for you if you're lost and you don't want to get saved and you don't want to get straightened out doctrinally. Can't help you. Again, you know, I'm not some YouTube uh, webcam wonder guy or something. I've watched videos. I studied for a long time before I ever made my first video. I used to make DVDs and I decided to come out and put my stuff out for free on YouTube. That's why I'm here. All right, I've preached in, in churches. I've done street ministry. I've you know, door to door, all, all that stuff. So, but just wanted to put this video out to challenge you if you're out there and you're a postie. Um, you're not looking for Jesus. You can't really hold on to the scriptures in the Pauline epistles that talk about uh, looking for Jesus. For we wait for his son from heaven. Um, you can't look into that stuff. You can't really believe that. Which I get a some video of this bird here. It's right there. Um, it's called a common yellow throat. They're really pretty birds. I know is the sound that he makes. We like to call him Bug Bandit because he's kind of he has a yellow throat area, but then he has this black little thing around his eyes, kind of like the Lone Ranger, you know. And um, and they eat bugs. So we, we, you know, it's kind of a little black thing around there. We, you know, it's like a bandit. So we say bug bandit. Probably can't hear him too good. He's kind of cheeping, chirping. Yeah, just be shy. Come on. You can't come out and, and show yourself to the people. He won't do it. So. There was a tree or something he might pop up and let himself be seen but yeah all right whatever <laughs> i can't keep standing here trying to get you to see a bird but um just be encouraged brethren if you're saved uh, the lord knows how to preserve you and how to uh, protect you he's not you're not facing his judgment and his wrath that's ridiculous uh judgment seat of christ is about rewards things that you've done for him that's what you're facing uh yeah and, and there'll you'll suffer loss you'll realize oh, i should have done things more for the lord i wish i would have you know read the bible more witnessed more whatever things for the lord yeah you'll suffer loss but you're not going to be uh suffering or anything being burned like in purgatory or whatever else that's a pagan barbaric teaching um just a horrible, disgusting thing. Uh, but, you know, if you're saved, you're genuinely born again, then your next, the next uh, supernatural event is going to be the door of salvation. If you haven't watched my studies on that, Jesus Christ, that's one of his titles, the door. He's the way into heaven. One mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. How do you get up to God? Through Jesus Christ, the door. I am the door by me if any man enter in, you know. Um, lots of scriptures on that. You can watch that study as well. Uh, take some time to watch the more detailed studies. These walk and talks are quick little things and whatever and fine. But um, you really need to watch the bigger doctrinal studies. There will be a lot bigger blessing to you and get you really grounded in the scriptures. And it won't cost you anything but your time. So... 
that'll be it for now. It's starting to get dark here. We need to get in. We have to read the Bible and get to bed. Now we go to bed early. <laughs> I like going to bed earlier. I used to just to say this little thing here too to maybe help some people. Um, we used to go to bed really late. You know, I'd, I'd work till one or two o'clock in the morning or something, you know, blue screen, computer screen, and just messes up your melatonin levels and, and uh, really bad for your health. And uh, watched a guy, Dr. John Bergman, and um, not a perfect man by any means, not a saved man by any means, but he's got some pretty good stuff that I've listened to over the years and uh, kind of a new age or whatever, but um, natural health stuff, I'll listen to people and give, you know, Hear them out, hear what they have to say. I reject the new age stuff, but but anyhow, he talked about this need for getting proper sleep. It's when your body rebuilds, your cells and everything else regrow uh, when you get good sleep. And he said you should go to bed at 10.30 at the latest and wake up at, at uh, 4.30 in the morning. And then eventually you can go to 6.30 in the morning. Go to bed at 10.30, get up at 6.30. But he said start out 10.30 to 4.30 until your body gets used to it. And there's a whole thing of circadian rhythm as well, which is an interesting thing. Um, again, I don't know how much of that I, you know, uh, subscribe to or whatever else, but um, I tried it. And you should, you know, two hours before you go to sleep, you should cut out all electronics. And then an hour before you go to sleep, you should um, read a paper-based book. No Kindle stuff or anything, no screens of any kind. So two hours before you go to bed, shut off the computer, no television, no screens of any kind. One hour before you go to bed, read. And I think he even said you could read for a half hour and write paper, you know, pencil and paper for a half hour. And then you go to bed at 10.30. And um, in very little amount of time, you start to, your body, you reset your body and you'll get better rest. And it worked. I've been doing that for years, and I have my occasional bad nights, but uh, for the most part, it's really not that bad. And um, I sleep pretty good, and I actually don't go to bed at 10.30, I go to bed at 8.30. Sometimes even earlier than that if I can get away with it. Um, and my sleep drastically improved, and I've done a lot better since then. And I have no intention to go back. Oh boy, now we're starting to get some rain, I better get in. Don't want to ruin the camera, but uh, so try that out and um, we'll see in upcoming videos again, as I always say at the end of every video, because I truly am thankful. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support of the ministry. Really appreciate it. See you in upcoming videos.